Hi friends, uh, long time no see, at least for this type of video. For the last three months, I have been dealing with the camper renovation and I'm gonna be honest, while I was logging in my receipts, I did not go through and do the full reconcile of my budget. It was a total mess to get like all done when I finally sat down to do it. And I, a few years back, I had a similar thing where I like, took a while off from doing the full reconcile of my budget and I will ugh, I always tell myself like never do that again because it is a mess so much easier to just like keep up with it on the monthly but I also wasn't exactly sure how I was going to do the accounting for the camper uh, the plan was to take the money out of my real estate investing savings account but I didn't want to do that every single time I made a purchase so instead what I did was I kept it in a different log and you can see I have all my receipts here and and uh, yeah, you'll see what I ended up doing. I'm happy with what I ended up doing. But yeah, let's do a run through of my last three months of my budget. Um, and I hope your budget is going well as well. If you would like the budget I'm using today, I have it on my Etsy shop. I'm also going to show my net worth tracker, which I think is an amazing tool for anyone on a personal finance journey, because it not only shows the micro of your month over month spending, it shows kind of the macro of how your total finances are doing. Uh, month over month and year over year. So I highly recommend those. They're both less than $10 and uh, who knows, maybe they'll be on sale when you go look at them. Also, don't forget to subscribe if you want more personal finance and transparent money stuff. Uh, I show you my budget because I like to be transparent about money and especially how much things like real estate costs. I think a lot of a lot of people who want to get into this space have no real idea of how much things cost and I want to contribute to a wider education of that and uh, showing what things realistically cost so that you can budget better. I had a real hard time figuring out how much this might cost when I was going into it. So, all right, so first up we're starting with August. I bought the trailer. I was planning to buy the trailer the very last week of August, normally when I was doing the, normally when I would be doing my recap like the first week of September on uh, September 2nd I bought the camper so everything went out the window from there uh, August was pretty normal I made eight thousand seven hundred and fifty seven dollars total um, most of that was from oh look actually budget girl this month uh, I made slightly more than I did at my Texas a and job Jacob and my renter both paid me and I paid Jacob for some labor because we had to dig a trench and kind of uh, regrade the backyard and that was not fun at all. That was the previous month that's already been paid for, but I paid him late um, or just kind of took it out of this month's rent. So uh, let's see, spent 300 bucks on restaurants, $500 on groceries and $440 on miscellaneous stuff. So it looks like I bought a flight to Jackson, um, some roller derby stuff because I was getting back into roller derby, and uh, some stuff for the Little Free Library. So um, all good there. I also had a bunch of physical therapy appointments. And let's go ahead and go down to, so my total expenses were uh, $3,783 and then I saved $500 and invested $900. So total, total expenses, 5183. And then I made 3,400 from Budget Girl. So thank you so much for watching. Looks like a lot of that was from YouTube and some affiliates and the financial diet summit that I did. And then my expenses were about $1,000, $500 of that is tax savings. Um, and then my merch was fine. And then I bought a little bit of stuff. This was at the point where I wasn't I wasn't sure what property I was going to be buying yet. I wasn't, the camper wasn't secure yet. So I spent 56 bucks on kind of generic Texas themed decor for the future Airbnb that I was going to have. So coming on down, total income was 8757 uh, minus my expenses from each of these categories. And I had $2,451 left over, which is incredible because I used to not make that in a month. <laughs> and I sent all of that to my real estate investment savings. So um, let's plow through and you guys can see the net worth at the end. All right, so let's go on to September. So September was a really busy month. I went to Austin for FinCon for a couple of days and then to Mississippi for a wedding. And then I also went to Arkansas for the camper. So there was a lot of travel. I only made $7,003 this month, which is still incredible. Most of that was from my day job. $2,186 of that was from work. And then my personal expenses and everything were pretty normal. 
I spent $300 on a restaurant, $300 on groceries, and $1,099 on personal spending. Most of that, half of that was to get a new phone because coming home, I lost my phone. Um, there was a whole thing, but got a new phone. Everything's fine. Um, I had a pet sitter, hotel trip to go stay in the camper. I didn't put hotel or food into my actual camper expenses, but I did put the truck that we rented to go get the camper and the gas for it. So that's where we divided that out. Everything else is going to be in the camper category. Let's see. So restaurant was up a bunch because I was traveling. Also had a lot of gas, but that doesn't include camper gas. So let's see. On Budget Girl, I made twenty one eighty six. Uh, most of that was from a sponsored video, so thank you, Centus. And I had seventeen fifty in expenses, and that was mostly because of FinCon and the travel and everything for that. So that's a once a year kind of bigger expense, but I do get to deduct most of it from my taxes. I only get to deduct half for food, but it's all in here. So um, BG property is fine. And you see over on this side, I've moved the camper stuff because what I ended up deciding to do was for this setup period was to kind of take all of the camper expenses out of my normal budget because it was just really going to screw stuff up. So we'll get to that in just a second. So my total income was seven grand. Uh, minus 5700 for main expenses, which does include like my full mortgage, which I then get paid entirely back for my renters, and then my budget goal expenses, property expenses. So it's actually negative 536 for this month. Big month, and this is fine. So this is what happens when you spend more than you make in a month. So I actually ended up, I had $500 that I had invested or had sent to my future REI savings just as normal. So I took that out. Um, I essentially gave that back to myself. And then I took $37 from my short-term savings funds. So I used to have travel sinking funds, all sorts of sinking funds for that sort of thing. And I ended up just kind of simplifying my system a little while back. So I just have short-term and long-term savings and my REI savings. So my long-term emergency savings, I don't really touch. That's in a separate bank. You'll see that when we get to the net worth tracker, but I am actively saving for my future real estate investment um, still, even though I'm in the middle of the camper reno. And then I have about two grand as kind of like a mini emergency or short-term savings fund. So if something comes up like travel, medical, dog expenses, just something out of the norm, I can pull from that without having to tap my big emergency fund. And I have another video on that that I'll link below. All right, so now into the fun part. In this month, I spent $8,160.58 on the camper and the reno. This is including the actual camper, which was $4,200. And it was starting on all of the stuff that I was purchasing for it, that I have to have all of the stuff for like a short-term rental, everything you would need at home, you know, silverware, sheets, blah, 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 blah. And you need multiple sets of sheets and towels. So I had, uh, since I had purchased the trailer, I went ahead and started purchasing all the stuff to go to that, including um, the truck rental is here, little decor items like cactus hooks, less fun stuff like paint, um, a ladder. Um, there are some tools in here that I will be able to use again, um, not many. I think the ladder was the biggest thing. Um, I did buy a rotary sander, but I got it used for 20 bucks. So I don't even think that was in here. Yeah. Pillow covers, mattress, ottoman, all sorts of the stuff that you need. Total out 8160. And what I did was I pulled that from as a chunk from my REI savings. So I was just paying it out of pocket. Once I have the total number, pulled that from the savings account. So this doesn't touch my actual normal budget. And that's just kind of the way this had to be. I've, I've done it differently in Renault's in the past. This is how we had to do it for this one. <laughs> All right, so October, steaming along. Um, Texas a and I made 35.58. So there was a one-time merit pay that I got pre-tax, $530 after tax, that was a little less. Um, and I had a very slight pay increase. It was a review time and my boss very kindly wants to keep me <laughs> and felt I deserved a review and a raise. So I now make $1,380 a year more. Just a very slight pay increase, but I'm so grateful for it. Um, in my journalism days, the only way you could get a raise was if you changed jobs. They, they just didn't happen outside of this. So every time I get a raise, I'm flabbergasted <laughs> for being honest. 
I also enrolled in an FSA because it was like benefit change up time for $50 a month pre-tax. I also got a $2,032 refinance check back from when I refinanced in March of this year. I had to keep going after this company who kept sending the check to like the number and address of my duplex, but they refused to put A or B on it. And for some reason, the mail system will not deliver a check that is not to like 123 Main Unit A or 123 Main Street by itself. It's not my address. Um, so they sent checks twice and both times I had to call, it was M&T Bank and I had no problems with them other than this, but I had to call and call and call and call and they have the worst phone system. And every time I got someone, I was like, just please send me the check to unit B. Yes, I own units A and B. I own the whole address, but send the check to B because that is where I live. And yeah, that took seven months, um, but they finally sent it to me and I got it and I was able to check, cash it. I also in this month filed a claim on my roof because back during the late summer, we had a really bad hailstorm. This was when I was able to find a roofer who could come out and do it. The insurance company cut me two checks. One was for like eight grand and one was for like $3,000 or $300. And one was for the roof and one was for the shed. Um, I'm not gonna replace the shed. The shed is fine. Um, it did have some damage. So I cashed the $389 check and the eight grand check four grand, eight grand. I don't know how much it was for. I gave to the roofer who cashed it. I also gave him a $2,440 check, which was my roof deductible. And we had to have proof that I paid the deductible and he gets to go after the roofing company for any overages from the specs that they did. All that's fine. We're still actually waiting on a final check from them, but it ended up kind of working out where these canceled each other out. I got the refinance check and it kind of paid for the roof. So kind of a, a net zero there. I would have just paid the roofing fee out of my duplex emergency fund because that's what it's there for, but you know, in and out. So it looks pretty much the same on the net worth tracker. All right, um, not that much different about my regular spending. Spent 178 bucks on restaurants, $473 on um, groceries. We did do a big prepper stock up because it's getting kind of uh, scary weather and last last winter it was very scary weather so we we did a big prepper stock up and that was a lot of that and then I also made some emergency kits for my four plus Jacobs one student worker um, we have students here last year they went through the same winter storm we did and they are all living in like dorms and apartment houses and so I built them little emergency kits with just basic emergency supplies. I'm going to have a video on that coming out soon, but that contributed to a lot of the 339 that I spent on personal money. Um, and I just, I just want to take care of them. I know that winter storm was scary for everyone and yeah, just a little bit more prepared. They're away from home. They don't have the supplies they might normally. So, um, let's see, I did my final physical therapy appointment in this month, which is good. And then let's go ahead down to Budget Girl. So I made $2,070 this month. And most of that was from YouTube and also the extra campaign I did over the summer. I finally got paid out for that. And then my total expenses were 1435 And most of that was for uh, VA work and some other normal stuff. Um, and then yeah, you can see over here, roof deposit. All right, so this month I made 9511 and um, after all of my expenses, I had 2815 left over. Once again, incredible. And so I put all of that to my REI save. I realize it feels, it looks a little funky that I'm about to show you how much I spent on REI and also how much I put to the REI save. It's kind of in and out of the same bucket, so it doesn't really matter. I could like subtract one for the other, but this was cleaner. Um, do do you what works for you in your budget? This is what works for me in my brain. <laughs> so down here, I have um, everything that I spent this month on the Airbnb. So this was a lot of labor um, for like the new hot water heater, flooring. This was a lot of less fun stuff that I got to buy in October. I did get some stuff from like the salvage store, had to get a bunch of like co converters and cords and 
all sorts of stuff. I also was paying for parking and screw covers and camper back and blah, 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 blah. And you can also see if I like refunded or returned something that I didn't end up using, that's also logged in here. It was the easiest way was to just put everything in and then if I return anything, take that as a minus out of there. So the total that I spent this month was $1,878.18. And that just came out of the REI save and this amount of money went into the REI save. So this is the way we go. All right, so it is the end of November, but I'm gonna separate November into a second, another video because we're not quite done yet. And the budget's not done yet. That's just the way it is. Today's the 20th. 3rd, 24th. And so let's go over to the net worth tracker. And then you'll get a little, slightly more traditional November net worth report because I'm finally reconciled. So I had to kind of do this all at once. So um, let's just go down. My checking across the three months, pretty normal variations. Um, duplex checking, same as well. These just go kind of up and down based on when I pay bills. Um, $10,000 in my emergency fund, $12,000 in my duplex emergency fund, and $2,000 in my short-term savings. So really I have like 24 grand of cash savings on hand, which is a good buffer, which I enjoy. It's, it, it soothes the safety in me. All right, and let's see, I've got 20 grand in my new home savings account, which is amazing. I actually thought that this, I, my highest point on this was the 24, one, Six two I had in July. That was the highest point. Then I bought the camper, put stuff into the camper, etc. But I have still been putting any overages into this account, so it it hasn't actually gone down that much, which is amazing. Um, I've got two hundred eighty eight bucks in my car insurance and two thousand fifty eight dollars in my YouTube save. You can see how these varied over the last couple of months. So total cash and savings is fifty four grand, which is really cool. So. Um, this also means that if a property pops up and I've been touring properties that I can put the camper on, that I can use as my next real estate investment, I have the money there to do it. So I've been looking, haven't found anything perfect yet, but I've been looking. Just waiting for the right one. I'm trying to be patient. All right, next, retirement. So I've got $16,277 in my Texas Retirement System retirement account, 10 grand in an IRA with Betterment, a 25 grand in a Roth IRA and uh, $17,659 in a Roth IRA that's invested that I'm actually actively using. These others just kind of are old. So the bottom one's the one that grows. <laughs> All right, um, so that's 70,000 total in retirement, which is so cool. That's really neat, uh, especially since just the, I mean, at the beginning of the year, I only had 33 in retirement. So that'll just, the stock market's been crazy this year. Really, really cool um, to watch your money grow like that. Um, there's there's no real other way to get your money to grow that fast, especially passively. All right, next up, I've got a couple of little baby brokerages, um, just kind of fun investments. So two thousand four hundred in M one, um, and then three hundred dollars each in Acorns and Robinhood. And those are just play money. So total of seventy two thousand nine hundred seventeen dollars in investments, um, making one thousand one hundred twenty seven thousand one hundred thirty six dollars in technically liquid assets. Next, my property assets. So we've added a third line here, which is kind of cool. I'm still only valuing my house at 240, even though it's probably worth closer to 300 now, and my car at 6,000, but I have added in the trailer, which I'm guessing is worth at least as much as I bought it for. Next month, you can see that I actually um, am valuing this trailer at 15 grand, because I think I could really easily sell it for 15 grand, like easy peasy, because it's, it's done now can't wait for you to see it. I really can't. All right. Um, so my total assets are $377,336 minus one debt, which is my house, which I owe $223, um, $223,342. Um, I am refinancing again, so I will not have a payment next month. Um, but I'm going to apply that payment when it goes to a new bank in January. It's just, a refi kerfuffle um, rates are really low. I'm actually only refining down a quarter of a percent, but it's a free refi. So I didn't have to pay for any uh, reappraisals or anything like that. And anytime you can refi down an interest percentage, it saves you money in the long term. So I'm going from 2.75 to 2.5. That will uh, save me a little bit of money just every month going forward. Yay. So monthly debt change is only down $53 because I refied um, it as the money was transferring this month I paid my mortgage payment to the refi company who 
does stuff. I'm not explaining this well and I am not a good source for this. So ask somebody else about that. Sorry. <laughs> um, making my net worth um, $153,994. I just realized I'm a 4150. That's a new one. That's really cool. 150 grand net worth. Alrighty. Um, so for this month, it says I'm up eight grand and I'm guessing a lot of that is stock market and just the, that I now have this new camper asset that used to be money in my other account. Um, and my total net worth is up for the year, 58 grand, which is more than I make at my day job. Y'all, this is really cool. A few years back when I was in debt, I couldn't have imagined money when you don't have debt, how much your money can grow. It's really incredible and also kind of unfair to, it was, I had to scrape for like every single penny back when I was in debt. But once you actually have money, it's so much easier to make money. Like to an, to an almost unfair degree to people who, are, I can still remember the feeling of like every single extra cent I got putting it to debt and it just not even counting for like a full dollar against the debt because of the interest. But now that interest is working for me, it's really incredible. So I, I sincerely hope that you can take out of this that if you can pull yourself out of debt and if you can sacrifice a little bit to get out of debt on the other side, it is so much easier. And I'm sorry for whatever happened that got you into debt. For me, it was my own choices in school, but it is so much easier on the other side. And I, you can get here. You can. I, I hope to help you. This is my net worth report. I would love to know how your recent months have been going. I will have November up soon. Um, I'll film it as soon as November is done. And thank you so much for watching and being patient with me. And I hope you've been enjoying the camper content, especially on Instagram. I'm sorry I haven't been as good at videos because honestly, I only have so many hours in the day. And when I'm really focused on something, I, I'm like full in focused. <laughs> yeah, check out my Instagram at GoBudgetGirl for camper content and also you can follow the actual camper itself for the next stage of the journey at the Ag Wagon on Instagram and Facebook. So that's gonna, it's, it's so close to being done. All right, I will see you guys next time. Don't forget to subscribe. Bye.